Good morning, or night, or afternoon. Time is an illusion. It's Ron, bringing you another exciting update to the sleepy flagship video synthesis system. Mez and VidOS. First, I'll give you a brief overview of all the new features that got added since the last time I made one of these mega guides, and then we will start from scratch for a full engine overview for a more holistic view of the engine. I'll be glossing over some of the basics, so if something is unclear, make sure to check out dogs.sleepycircuits.com, the previous mega guide, or just leave us a comment below, and we'll do our best to help you out. First, an explanation of the component parts of our 3D video synthesis ecosystem. As the hardware component, we have MEZ. MEZ is a wearable wireless handheld audio visual controller that has haptic push knobs, a built-in IMU for measuring its orientation, and an RGB segment display. MEZ is made specifically for VidOS, my 3D video synthesis app, but it works easily with any MIDI compliant software or hardware. MEZ and VidOS are developed together to make the ultimate portable video synthesizer system. This video will focus mostly on using MEZ to control VidOS to make visuals for the stage, but stay tuned on more music-focused guides coming in the near future. Since the last mega demo, I have added and moved around a few things. First off, I've split the domain repetition settings into two, so you can now do this per shape. Unfortunately, this means that the Z repetition has been removed temporarily, but it will return in a similar per shape capability in an upcoming update. The last update also introduced a per shape noise function, two point controllable lighting, two new feedback modes for the feedback page that has an overdrive when the gain is maxed that takes out any keying for the visual for maximum drama. And in this most 1.4 update, I've added a suite of modulation controls with controllable LFO shapes, magnitude, and an independent amplitude envelope per parameter that responds to the incoming audio from the built-in microphone or a plugged-in audio interface. Most importantly, VidOS now has a preset system. All the parameter and modulation states are saved onto your device, giving you over 100 preset slots, one for every MIDI note. While the preset slots are accessible from any MIDI controller, the advanced modulation options that are added in this patch are MEZ specific because they rely on SysX messages. So unfortunately, they're not gonna be supported by third-party controllers. This is because the current control scheme has already run out of CC messages, and it's best to keep the modulation system on the software side anyway for maximum precision. If you're using a third-party device, I would suggest you use your preferred controller's modulation options. Finally, what is not immediately visible is that the windowing backend has changed for the app, which means it now correctly full screens on desktop and allows full screen window on iOS's stage manager. There are also now resolution scaling settings and LED brightness and haptic options for MEZ itself that save from session to session. Okay, that's a lot, it may seem a little complicated, but don't worry, we will go over all of this and how it fits into the sleepy workflow in this extended user guide. So I hope you enjoy. First, let's take a look at the hardware components again. We have eight push encoders, a center button, two side buttons, and a USB-C port for wired MIDI and two amp charging. MEZ is wearable, can sense its orientation, so you can dance with your shapes, and has helpful habit feedback that has, by default, uh, a buzz when you have hit the end boundary of a control. MEZ implements button combinations on all of the encoders and buttons for even more functionality, but we're gonna get into those details shortly. Let's open up the app and turn on Mez to get started. First things first, let's make a shape. After dismissing the splash screen, the app starts out in this simple, tiny sphere state. If you don't see this or already made some changes, don't worry, hold the center button and wait for the circle to come around and then the Mez to make a vibration to initialize the patch. You can also make your own custom starting point using the preset system, but more about that at the end of the video. Currently, the UI is laid out in a mirrored fashion, with the left controls focusing on one shape and the right side on the second shape. In VidOX, we mix and morph 3D math functions together to create novel shapes and visuals. First, we're gonna make some nice still shapes and then get into how to get them moving and animating with a musical performance or just a song that's playing in the background. Tapping each of the encoders reveals a different page or bank of controls, which we're gonna go over right now, one at a time. But first, we're gonna need to learn about the map. In its very default state, tapping the center button opens up the contextual maps. This opens up an on-screen guide for the page that you're currently controlling. So remember to tap this button if you ever get lost and make sure to line up the symbols on the mez with the triangle facing up 
to match this map's orientation. As the software gets updated and vidOS becomes even better, these maps are going to change and reflect any additional functionality that is added. Let's start by tapping one of the bottom diagonal encoders that represent the settings for shape A and B. This page contains up to four parameters for the selected shape that this is selected with the top knob. And actually now, uh, this page substitutes a noise modulator for the fourth parameter if the selected shape function does not happen to have one. You can also twist and mirror any of the shapes, just like this. Tapping the left or right encoder opens up the material page. This page has settings for lighting of the material and each of the shapes. Currently, each shape comes with its own light that can be moved around in a fixed area behind the camera for a sort of studio-style two-point lighting setup. You can also control how bright this light is and, of course, the color of the object itself. The colorizer is based on the perceptually uniform color space called OK Lab. Chrominance is how colorful your shape is. Hue is a selection of the base color and luminance is how bright the color is. You can also control how metallic the material is with the shininess control. These controls allow you to select any color with a nice smooth transition between them, which becomes even more important once we get to the animations and modulations. Now for the transform page. The up diagonal encoders tap to reveal the transform options for each of the shapes. This page lets you control the position of the shape, which is even more useful when you're using some of the mirroring axes, per shape rotation, and domain repetition. I'm going to repeat shape A and dial in a second one so I can show you how to move the camera around and it's more obvious. And to do that, we're going to be going to the bottom most page, where we have the options to control the camera and the scaling of the two shapes. You can move the camera in 3D space or even rotate the space around the model to get a better view of your objects. The scale A and B parameters are useful macro controls to control all of those previously mentioned shape parameters at once. So you can adjust the size of your desired shape once you've got a particular look that you like. And finally for the feedback page. The top encoder press reveals the feedback page. This page contains controls for all sorts of trippy repetitions and contains the classic internal feedback effect that is a staple of video art. The top three controls allow you to turn up the gain and then offset the feedback frame. You can also use zoom and rotate to get this virtual camera uh, to give you even more crazy effects and repeat crazily. You can select from three different feedback modes at the moment by rotating the bottom encoder. And then these last two controls are the intersection type and blend controls. Using these together allows you to use one of the most unique things that the system is capable of, to smoothly blend three-dimensional shapes. There are a few modes here ranging from a standard smoothing that looks just kind of like lava lamping the shapes into each other, to some stranger ones like stair stepping for even weirder shapes. So make sure to try those out. And now before we continue even further, it's important to know about the settings page. Holding the center button opens up the page that controls the settings for both MES and VidOS. For the MES side, we have the LED brightness and the haptic scheme. The LED side is pretty straightforward, it just gets brighter or darker, but the haptic settings have these three LED states that allow you to have the MES buzz on the boundaries of the controls, which is the default behavior, buzz on every step, or just turn off the haptics entirely. For the vidOS side controls, we have global smoothing for all of the parameters, and then most importantly, the resolution scaling control, which lets you turn down the resolution of the rendering. So if you see your app start to get choppy, turn this control to the right to scale down the resolution for higher frame rates. Your preferred setting for this will vary based on your device's graphic capabilities, so make sure to mess around with this one a bit. All of these settings save to your device automatically. And now, let's get moving! The simplest way to do this is to use MES's onboard inertial momentum unit. This uh, IMU means that you can twist and turn a device and use its orientation to control the orientation of the shape. First, uh, press both of the side buttons at the same time. This is meant to be a sort of grab gesture. 
And then, when the center LED is red, this means that the MES is actively sending out its orientation. This function stays on until you decide to turn it off, so that you may clip your MES to your belt and use your body to modulate the visual while hands-free and performing something on stage. But also this system features per-parameter modulations, also known as LFOs or low-frequency oscillations. Holding and turning a knob adjusts the speed of the modulation, and holding and turning the knobs next to it controls the range of this LFO. And then the next one lets you select from up to five shapes for each of them. Of those five, we have infinity, ramp, triangle, sine, cosine, and tangent. But not all of the parameters have the infinite shape modes, and some of them would quickly disappear if we allowed this. To reset the modulation, keep holding the knob, and then tap the center button to clear the LFO and envelope settings. The same page also contains per-parameter envelope followers for incoming audio. As you can see to the left of the held encoder, there are additional two controls for the range of the envelope and smoothing. To see this in action, we will need a sound source. I could show you this quickly that the onboard microphone works if I just clap. This means you can just show up at the venue and let your device listen to the room for audio reactivity or you can connect the class compliant audio interface. For this example, I'm gonna play a lo-fi beat off of my SP404. I'm not gonna get into how to use this very complex device, but all you need to know that if I press a button, it makes sounds and sends this audio signal over USB directly into my iPad. Let's patch this into the scale of the object to get that classic size change effect as the audio gets louder. You can tune the audio reactivity per parameter for a very fine and detailed control over the audio visualization. And now, last but not least, we're going to put all of these mentioned techniques to use by saving some of these states uh, so that we can recall them later when we're at a performance. Holding two neighboring encoders and tapping any third encoder will send a MIDI note message from MEZ. Each MIDI note becomes a preset slot in the app. Hold the combo for three seconds to save the current visual into the slot, or tap it quickly to then recall that state. This configuration allows 48 slots or notes with the button combinations, which should be more than enough for you to plan out a gig. And then if you get fatigued holding the two encoders, you can now also tap the center button to lock that preset page. Once you've done this, you can see that there's two LEDs lit up. And now you can let go of the two held encoders and you will stay in this preset page. MES does not send any CC info while in this state deliberately, so uh, it doesn't do anything and you can go while tapping away on the knobs to recall visuals or even send those notes to a synthesizer to, to trigger drums or clips or anything like this. Each preset fully saves the state of vidOS, including the modulations and the current time. So tapping the preset repeatedly will jump your mods to exactly where they were when you save the preset for a nice rhythmic reset. To leave the preset page lock, just tap the center button again and you will return Mez to its last opened encoder page. As you can see, now you can plan out full audio reactive 3D video synthesizer patches and recall them on the fly with MES and vidOS. Since all of these presets can be triggered with a simple MIDI note, you can also arrange audio visual compositions if you include a MIDI sequencer, such as an Electron or any of the other many offerings on the market. I'm not gonna go over this in this video to keep this from getting too crazy long, but stay tuned for a guide on this in the near future. For recording your creations, we recommend you use either the built-in screen recorder that's built into iOS or OBS on desktop, which is kind of similar. The screen recording will also capture any audio that may be playing in the background, so this is an amazing way to rapidly create music videos and share them with your friends. Just make sure another app like AWM is listening to the audio and playing it out of your default audio device. And it should be captured along with your video for a quick music video creation. 
And that's it. Well, for now at least. I have further developed Mez and VidOS and the Sleepy Video Ecosystem to make a quick and easy to use cutting edge HD 3D video synthesizer. With the recent expansion of the modulation systems, envelope following and preset systems in 1.4, I believe the system is now truly ready for stage use. I also hope it has addressed a lot of the desires of our community as a lot of these features came from your awesome suggestions. One of the things I hear most often is how people want to add audio following to visuals, and now this is easier than ever. So keep those suggestions coming, and please tag Sleepy Circuits in your visuals and show photos because we love seeing how our products are being used. Next up, I'm looking to work on VidOS's interface to better incorporate the touchscreen into the workflow and streamline some of the complexity that's been added to the system with this patch. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned here on YouTube for future updates, or better yet, subscribe to our mailing list on our website. This has been Ron, and I hope you enjoy exploring dreamscapes with my crazy instruments. Keep making art, eat lots of fiber, and most importantly, stay sleepy.